people that really haven't been able to call in or didn't make it here. Do you okay. want to do that? Okay. Uh, Mary Sullivan and Wesley Gray, stars. Um, I've enjoyed the emails with, with both of them. And then Tom's here, so we could kind of Tom come up next. But why don't you talk about, let's talk about Mary Sullivan first. Okay. And Mary Sullivan should be here uh, later on tonight. Uh, she's coming with her daughter, who is her co-author. And uh, they wrote a book called If I Had a Daddy. And uh, it's a, a very moving little book, and it should be very interesting. And Autumn is going to come up and receive a, an award with her mom. So that should be very interesting. Uh, and I'll let them tell you more about them later on when they actually get here. Um, and then Wesley Gray um, was a, uh, is a Marine officer. Uh, he's now getting, I think, his PhD or something. And uh, so he may or may not be here. It sounded like he, he had some uh, problems that would make him not be able to get here. Maybe he was sick. Oh, okay. He wasn't sure if they were going to go and make the trip. Okay, so that, that's the, the situation now. Um, a marvelous book. Uh, he, uh, his book is called Embedded, a Marine Corps, I believe it's a Marine Corps officer, Marine Corps advisor officer inside, inside the Iraqi Army. Uh, a, a quick read, uh, very interesting. Uh, it's a study in uh, just how different we are and how we see the world differently. Um, you know, and I, I often jokingly said, how come the bad guys don't know they're the bad guys? <laughs> well, um, of course, this was the Iraqi army. I'm not implying that they were the bad guys. But just how differently our culture makes us look at things. And it's a, a very interesting book from the, the time he got there to the time he left. Uh, the things that he learned, uh, uh, just how we see things differently. So that was the West. Okay, and if they are listening, they can still call in. Yes, and we still love you. Come on, call in. <laughs> okay, and then I have a couple of other people I wanted to introduce. Okay, let's okay, okay. Vista Boyland and Tom, uh, John Taylor. Come on up. <laughs> These folks have been out there working hard for us. And I wanted to give them an opportunity to, to, to talk. And I know this is Vista Boyland here. She is the co-author of America Reborn with her husband, Lee. Thank you. It's a privilege to be here. And I'm enjoying hearing all of these wonderful stories, some of them very heartrending, and uh, having an opportunity to discuss with you some of the things that are important to my husband and I. And working together with Lee, we've actually been business partners now working 24-7 uh, in, in our home for well over 30 years. So I don't have the worry of the uh, empty nest. Never had that. Um, but Lee and I spent the last five years of our lives working on the completion of our trilogy on nuclear terrorism in the United States and the end results. We finished our third book, and Lee is going to be talking to you about that a little bit later, so I'm not going to dwell on that. Um, other than to say that it's been a wonderful experience in working with him because after all these years together, we'll be married 49 years in January. Um, I found out a lot. Thank you. I found out a lot of wonderful things about my husband that I didn't know in his writing skills. And one was that I knew that he had a great sense of humor, but I never knew how good it was because we have really, and we've tried to include in our writing uh, with a serious subject, nuclear terrorism, some, we think, rather amusing uh, vignettes and scenes and characters. Uh, some of them modeled after current contemporary people that are, they're, they're veiled, rather thinly veiled, or disguised with a change of name. But nonetheless, they're there, and we had a good time writing about them. On occasion, we do, uh, while we get along pretty well, we write pretty well together, and I will say this about Lee, Lee takes criticism great, better than anyone I've ever known. It's very hard for an author to allow himself to be critiqued the way my husband, I critique my husband with my red pen, and he has rather lovingly uh, named me the red pen of death. <laughs> but, <laughs> But I take it in the spirit in which it's, which it's intended. Um, but I would say that on occasion, we do have uh, time to argue over characters. 
Most often it happens when we're in bed because we're lying there cogitating over what we're going to write the next day. And occasionally I do not like a character that he has written. Um, for whatever reason, I, I take a dislike to them, so I caution him that he better be careful because I'm going to put a gun in somebody's hand and get rid of him real fast when I get to edit. <laughs> uh, but enough of that. Let me tell you that this morning I picked up my newspaper before we left our house in Melbourne, Florida to come here. And on the front page we had an article, Hero Comes Home. And this is a story of one of 12 individuals that we have lost in our county, Brevard County, alone to the war, and either in Afghanistan or in, uh, in Iran. Iraq, pardon. Uh, this is a story of Sergeant Robert Sanchez, uh, an Army Ranger, who died on October the 1st when his unit was attacked in Afghanistan with a roadside bomb. Uh, what is heartbreaking, I think, about this is, of course, the sadness of losing him because he went to school there and uh, grew up in Melbourne and went to school there and graduated from the high school. But what really touches my soul and heart is the outpouring of community spirit that occurred as there was over a hundred, hundreds of people turned out to line the roadways to welcome him home. And I think that speaks very well of the patriotism of our county, the people in our county. Uh, we have Patrick Air Force Base there, so there's a lot of military there. But it says something about the people in our county that they are, that they are touched by the loss of one of their own or simply by the fact that we, we've lost another one of our own. So to the family, if anyone is listening and knows these people, um, you have our prayers um, in your loss. And I, I say when we say our blessing every day, when we sit down to eat, we always try to say, God bless and watch over our military that's in harm's way. And I encourage everyone to do that because without the Supreme Being, um, we, have, we don't have a whole lot of hope. So. God bless all of you. Thank you for this opportunity to speak to you and bless you for the work that you're doing and will continue to do. Thank you very much. <laughs> could you give your website address? And also, when you get back, if you could email me a little bio, your website, and send me a picture. Well, actually, we could take the picture you just shot here. If you could send me your bio, I'll add it to the talk show page. Sure. Uh, the, the website is LeeBoylandBooks.com, and it is a bombshell. You've got to look at it because it's about <laughs> nuclear weapons. So <laughs> I think you'll find it very, very entertaining because he keeps it updated with uh, all kinds of new and interesting things. Thanks again. Thank you very much.